Barron's Modern Virginia. Uh, gets uh, decent reviews. Um, some people did not like it because apparently it's got a bit of a pineapple and apricot topping, which some people found a bit of a clash. Um, I'm still liking that fourth generation 1931. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this, show you what it looks like, give you my first impressions, and um, talk a little bit about briar quality and pipes and the Powerball. Powerball, the lotteries right now, it's, it's a, a billion dollars between Powerball and Mega Millions. One billion dollars right now as I sit here. Okay, five million shy, but, but by the end of the day, it's going to be a billion or, or, or more between those two lotteries combined. Do we live in a time of insanity? It's insane, man. It's insane. But I'd like some of that money, please. Send it my way. I did spend some money on lottery tickets. Um, I did, I did. Didn't give me a nice, like, you know, breath. Ooh, <laughs> you can smell the pineapple. Take these silly glasses off. Oh, I'm feeling all redneck. I got my uh, Texas baseball cap that I got in Dallas. Um, says sudden something on it. Mechanics, I don't know. I got my plaid shirt on and uh, my beard. Okay, so that is very pretty looking flakes, I tell you. I don't know about the quality of the tobacco, but um, smells, does smell fruity. Not as rich as the 1931. These flakes look really nice though. You've got like dark tobacco in there, a medley of colors. They just look really nice. Um, they're a good size and thickness. We shall see. I'm going to smoke, not this whole flake. I'm going to put it in my little Jake Hackett short smoke. Um, and while that's drying, while that is drying, let's talk about this uh, cheap corn cob pipe that I bought just the other day. Well, it didn't last very long. I'll tell you, I put some Penzance in there. It was smoking really nice. It was the best smoke of the Penzance that I've had. And then, um, well, I noticed that the, the stem was like glued in. So I don't know if that's just the deal on, on this particular brand of real cheap ones, but it seemed a little odd. And uh, then I ran a pipe cleaner in it and the pipe cleaner just stuck like as if there's um, a filter in there or something, but I don't know what's going on. So I couldn't, as I was trying to wiggle and get the pipe cleaner out, just the, the glue came apart and the whole thing just like pulled out. So what I think I might do is, um, I might actually break off, I might use a Dremel and saw off the end of this uh, uh, stem and then clean off the glue and uh, refit it um, to get some use out of this pipe. Also, I'm going to order a better corn cob online. I really have my eye on the uh, Dagna Poker. They look pretty sweet. If you've got a corn cob recommendation, let me know. Um, so, that's my corn cob there. This. Um, Needs a few more minutes drying, but like a billion dollars in lottery lottery money. Wow, wow. Okay, um, I'm hoping that this becomes my new favorite pipe, the uh, Merlina Pisa pipe. Um, I do like the finish on it. It feels really nice the way that they've cut it. It's interesting. Um, it's interesting the uh, the design, and I've decided that. I think I'm going to prefer bigger pipes from now on. You know, I like the little ones you can hold them in your mouth. You don't know they're there. Um, it's a less intense smoke. You go slower. The big ones do cool the smoke down. But I read an interesting article. It was by uh, by some... Pro I always use my knuckles when smoking a pipe. So I end up with ash all over my face. <laughs> Um, so I was reading a, a discussion, it was a, a, like a, a paper that someone had published from a few years back talking about real high-end pipes and artisan pipes. You know, your high-end Castellos and uh, Savinelli's and, and, and different ones um, out of Italy, let's say, and, and even, of course, uh, Dunhill pipes. And uh, he was saying that over the years he'd smoked and owned like the, the most expensive 
you know, a whole selection. He wasn't bragging. He just said, you know, him and his friends had, had had very expensive pipes, you know, all the way down to corn cobs. And um, some of the most expensive ones were poor smokers. Um, but I think overall, the better quality companies were better smokers. But the, the discussion really came down to, you know, as long as it's drilled right, you know, for, for airflow, um, and that the hole is in the right position, and, um, you know, the, the basics of the pipe design uh, are decent, then the only thing that really dictates the quality of the smoke, how often you can smoke it, how cool it is, and such, is the quality of the briar. And so what makes the quality of the briar, you know, and that's what the paper then changed into. And then is, is a cheaper company or like, let's say a company that CNC machines doesn't hand make uh, their pipes using top quality briar. Is it seasoned the same? Is it as dried out? Is it, is it as light? Is it as porous? And, um, and I think that's what we're really looking for in a quality pipe. Now, if you've got a lot of money, it's, it's then you... Um, you expect that it's going to smoke well, but like anything, when you go into higher levels of collectibles or, or anything, it's, it's diminishing returns. Um, and on the experience and what, what you're really getting is the, you know, aesthetics and rarity and, and quality and the finish and all of that stuff. So I guess in my pipe journey, I'm not, I'm not looking to spend a lot of money on expensive pipes, but I want good smokers. And what I find is the good smokers are the ones that, um, that absorb moisture better so that when if you smoke let's say two bowls out of it you're not just smoking steam right um warm steam so um and i did read that uh that's why corn cobs are really good because um they do a really good job with uh, with that and uh, of course meerschaum so uh um again i'm not in a, a mode to buy a lot of pipes i actually don't want to be smoking very much at all um, would like to wean off tobacco, but but I enjoy pipe smoke. Um, so a Meerschaum pipe, you know, and I, I did uh, get into looking at those after watching some videos of, um, oh boy, what's his name? You know, the, the professor in, uh, the history professor in, uh, in Germany, Bremen, Bremen Piper, Bremen Piper, good man. And um, so if I see, if I see a Meerschaum around, I'm not going to go out my way to look online, but I will buy one. Um, bup, 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 bup. what else? There's some nice Jake Hackett pipes available on YouTube right now. I like the look of one of them, but I'm not going to buy it. Unless I win some of this lottery money, that would be nice. I'm going to load up the little short smoke, tell you what it's like. It's not really, uh, needs a few more minutes, but I don't want to. Actually, it's feels like a good moisture level. A tiny little amount in this little pipe here. Have a look at comments. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, 130 subscribers. Wow. You know, I just uh, I didn't expect to get any subscribers really when I started this channel. I was not um, trying to get any. I was kind of goofing around and uh, you know wanted something to do uh, uh, to put my energy into. So uh, thank you for everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I'm a little too lazy to do a gore, uh, as you guys do, and it's popular in the community. But I think um, I think I'll do a gore uh, when I have more time, which will be around the time when I get 200 subs. Okay, so here's a, here's an interesting trick. It's better for big pipes, but um, I don't like using a bic. I've got to get like a, a new, it's a hippie lighter, a new lighter for pipes, a modern one. Um, so this is hemp wick. You buy it in head shops. And it's, uh, I find it really good as an alternative to matches to lighting a pipe. Because you got a little flame on a wick. And say, in a deep pipe, you can really direct where that flame is without burning and charring the wood of your pipe.
Well, that's a bit of a multi-step process, because then you've got to put this wick out so it doesn't smoke everywhere. But... Um, what am I getting out of that? All right, it's needing some relights. It's also a lower temperature flame from that, I believe. I'm tasting, I am tasting apricot. I'm going to look it up while I'm uh, smoking it here on tobacco reviews. Modern Virginia Flake. It gets uh, on tobacco reviews an over one 3.1 stars Virginia Burley blend. It's only got 17 reviews. It's not a popular, well reviewed blend. Um, Pressed into blocks, minimum of 30 days before it's cut into flakes. Finally, the flakes are packed to protect tobacco from breaking up. It's uh, two con uh, Virginia's from two continents, bright yellow and darker Virginia. Combination with modern Cavendish, touch of Burley to soften the smoke. Flavors of Burley, Cavendish, Virginia, flavoring of apricot and pineapple. I can taste the apricot, I can smell the pineapple. Off the bat, it's um, tastes like a nice smoke. It's more difficult to light than the other one, but I didn't let it dry as much. Um, it's not giving me the same uh, instant. enjoyment as the 1931. And what I mean by that is I'm not getting the same instant kind of sweetness. 1931 isn't overdone on the sweet. By the way, I got compliments on the room note of the 1931 last night, smoked it on a patio in a beer garden. First impressions, if you do not like apricot and pineapple and you think that doesn't belong in pipe tobacco, then modern Virginia is not for you. Um, I am undecided because it's my first little smoke of it. I would say... I would say it's a nice tobacco. It's nice. Uh, I don't want to bash it. It's a nice tobacco. Um, I don't really think that the, those fr particular fruit flavors are, are to my preference, but... Um, It actually smells nice. It, it smells nice and it smokes nice. It's smoking a little warm in this pipe. Um, I can tell it's a little hotter burning than the 1931, the Peter Stockerby's fourth generation. Um, but it, 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 it gets mixed reviews. It doesn't have many reviews to pull from. 
Um, I'd say if you onto if you like aromatics and and fruit flavors, then you might want to give this one a try. It's burning nice. It's I think it also is going to be better once it once it burns down on the bowl a little bit. And uh, now let's talk about the. Uh, I really hope this because I really like this pipe actually the new one, and it was seventy two dollars after the discount. Um, so compare it to my little uh, Peterson. I love this little Peterson billiard, uh, Irish made, army, bent billiard. But um, I really do, and I like the fact it can hang it. You know, it contours and it's balanced well, but. Uh, the next pipe I get is going to be another big pipe, maybe bigger. I'm really hoping this becomes a favorite, and it's going to depend on how it how it behaves with moisture, absorbing and wicking it away, and and also once the carbon cake's built up. So. What do you guys like in reviews? I mean. I have some experience with tobaccos, you know, I can recognize different tobaccos, but um, I'm not someone you'd go to for reviews, quite honestly. Um, but hands down, the 1931 is a better smoke from, from an initial impression. And this tin was 14, it's uh, labeled at $14.99 from a cigar store. I'm getting some of the burly now. But that, that apricot is still there. It's pleasant. Pleasant, enjoyable smoke. Anyway, if you uh, go out and you buy a lottery ticket uh, after watching this video uh, and you win $500 million, then uh, kindly think of me. <laughs> and um, gifts are very welcome. I got a Christmas gift from a friend of mine. She knows that I'm uh, big into tech and, um, you know, with my uh, technology background. And uh, in fact, I lived in uh, Silicon Valley uh, once back in, I think, 1997. I think it was 97 and um, I used to hang out in Palo Alto all the time right at the birth of the internet uh, craziness and what I should have done is gone with my gut feeling because it was so vibrant and I should have basically quit my engineering job and just um, stayed there because uh, uh, years later I lived in San Francisco and um, actually one of my housemates was one of the co-founders of PayPal uh, who is now a billionaire and um, is part of uh, Peter Thiel, uh, sorry, Peter Thiel, he works with Peter Thiel and the uh, Founders Fund. And he was planning it when we were living together. But um, and he also obviously worked closely with Elon Musk and Elon Musk is just a, a rock star. He is, uh, I'm, I'm amazed by this guy. And uh, I think that I would have, well, everyone can say it, like really enjoyed some conversations uh, with him. And um, I think it's amazing what, what he's doing, what he's done. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this book and uh, my friend Claire bought me that for, as a Christmas gift and uh, uh, it's a great gift. I'm so happy about that. Um, so yeah, basically if you win the lottery and uh, because I inspired to buy a ticket, uh, definitely send, uh, uh, you know, you could send a million my way. I, I wouldn't, I would be happy to accept that, you know, I have no problems. We'll call it the uh, Pied Piper Charity Foundation. So I've kind of tuned out on news, you know. I get political and philosophical and I've got all my own opinions on life and, and how society should uh, behave itself or be different. 
and uh, really it just makes me fucking angry and upset and um, it's great to be informed but I'm taking I'm taking a, a few months out from watching any news pretty much I don't have a television I stream everything um, I use software like Kodi and stuff like that to stream what I, what I want to watch I don't like commercials I often will use ad blockers on web pages um, you know, I think we are psychologically uh, affected in, in, in ways that we just do not realize how powerful that they are from from advertising and marketing, like in the constant bombardment. I think it's so psychologically damaging for us. So um, I tend to and, and try and tune that stuff out. Smoking nice. If you guys have any suggestions for my channel, um, I would welcome them. Um, you know, I used to have done other videos on YouTube in the past, and you know, I'd go so far as to storyboard and, but uh, and I can do some pretty fancy stuff with with the computer here and editing, but man it just take, it takes a long time you know it's um it, it's uh, it's not always that that rewarding i enjoy messing around but uh but anyway yeah if you got any suggestions um let me know um i'm going to enjoy the rest of this bowl maybe i will uh pause the camera and come back to you and let you know my final thoughts once i finish it but you know it's not the same as smoking in a full pipe, you know, you get a slightly different experience. Um, so far, is it worth buying? Yes, I'll give it a thumbs up. It's past the 50-50 point of, uh, is it nice or not? But, but then again, you know, you've got the whole tin, so then you've got to go through the whole tin, and, and there's so many good tobaccos out. If it's not for you, you don't want to force it. It's like a book. Let's talk about that for a second. Um... Bill Gates uh, says in interviews that um, he will only read, a, he, he, if he starts a book, he has to finish it. It's one of his rules. And so he's very selective as to what books he will read. And I've started books in the past, and I'll get into them. And, you know, it can take a while for a book to, you know, it can change after the first, let's say, 50 or 100 pages. And then you really get into it. And up until that point, you're like, mm, I don't know if it's really for me. But um, I've got a nice collection of books in boxes because I'm often moving and putting stuff in and out of storage and um, some, sometimes I'll read three or four at once and then skim through them and maybe not finish any of them but I will get beneficial aspects from those books and they'll some fiction but most mostly not fiction so uh, when I was in England I picked up a couple of books and uh, this is one of them and it's uh, oh, I always forget a name but the lady that wrote the Harry Potter series and I'm halfway through this book. It's a, it's a hefty book, right? And uh, I'm not going to follow Bill Gates' rule because why waste your time on something that's a bad investment if you decided that, you know, like, especially after the halfway point of such, like 276 pages, the, the book's kind of blur, you know? It's a number one bestseller only because of her name. You know, people buy her books because of who she is. But in my mind, it's a pretty weak uh, version of uh, a Jack Reacher novel. And Jack Reacher novels are uh, pulp fiction. They're page turners. They're unrealistic. They are... But... Um, and that's what she's tried to copy. She's basically done a, a more boring Jack Reacher novel. And the reason why it's also beaten up and paddy is because I carried it around in my bag for four months and then I just couldn't really get into it. So like uh, it took me four months to get to the halfway point and now I'm like, next, I don't care to finish that book. I would rather read uh, motivating stuff like uh, interesting insights into Elon Musk. I also have like, uh, for those politically minded, I've got rules for radicals sitting down there. Someone recommended to me probably about eight years ago 
and um, I never read it. I didn't know what it was about really. And then I, I started reading it uh, probably about uh, eight months ago and then put that aside because I got distracted. It's interesting because, you know, our political climate. <laughs> climate. Um, but, um, and then I've also got a, a, an interesting one to carry around that's good for talking points, and it's Robert Anton Wilson. I, I think that Robert Anton Wilson was great. You know, he was one of the psychedelic generation, friends of Timothy Leary, and his books are just like, uh, they poke holes uh, and, and, and show you the flaws in society and life, but through really great, uh, at least this one, really fascinating interwoven stories that are just absolutely bizarre. Um, so that is a cool book. It's, it's the Schrodinger Cat Trilogy, and it is uh, three different aspects, I think, of the same story. And it's a, again, it's a book that um, I spoke about for, for about a year and carried around with me uh, in, into bars and coffee shops and uh, started conversations over it, but uh, never finished it. And now it's been so long. I think the, when I was reading that it was around 2007. It's been so long that uh, uh, I'll have to start from the beginning. <laughs> so maybe you've got book recommendations. Maybe you've got tobacco recommendations. Maybe you've got a recommendation for the channel. Again, I was lazy today with brewing coffee. I've got a Starbucks coffee. Why do I have a Starbucks coffee? Because they're everywhere and it's convenient. I don't think it's good coffee. I don't, you know, I, I don't like spending my money at Starbucks when I can brew it for a fraction of the, of the cost at home. But sometimes it's nice to get out of the house, especially as we are blessed right now with, I don't know if we have the warmest weather in the country or, uh, close to it but um it's it's like summertime in most other places right now it's uh i think it was 70 something degrees when i left the house earlier today and it's four o'clock in the afternoon and right now it is pied piper with the weather 74 degrees in tucson arizona and 77 degrees in phoenix arizona i lived in phoenix on and off uh Few, few times uh, in my life and um, noticeably more humidity and heat um, than Tucson. Tucson's always a few degrees cooler. A few more relights than the uh, 1931. I obviously didn't pause the video. I'd say it's a nice smoke. It's a nice mellow smoke. Virginia Flake with Burley in it, some toppings, Cavendish. Um, you get that weird apricotness in there, uh, but it's less sweet. It's uh, definitely less sweet than the um, 1931. So it's a personal preference, isn't it? I was talking to someone in a local craft beer place and um, he said, well, that's the great thing about craft beer. We all have a different, you know, preference. There isn't one that's really better than others if you've got a personal preference for it. And I say, wrong. There are better beers than other beers, you know. Um, anyway, with that, broken corn cob. What a disappointment. You know, I hate wasting money. That was a waste, you know, after tax of eight, $8 something. This is not a tobacco that I'd be inclined to grab, but you know the jar of tobacco that you see in every tobacconist? Especially those the standard aromatics. I don't know if that's your thing. I don't... I've never liked them. 
My camera ran out of space. So it wasn't filming. I was talking for a while. So I'll only I'll find out when I edit it where where it left off. I just deleted some files. So anyway, I'm like close to the bottom of the bowl of this uh, little pipe. Close to maybe halfway down. Burns a little warm in this little pipe here. A little steamy. I'd say flavor-wise, it's not complicated. I could see it, you know, if you, if you had a pipe that dissipates the uh, the heat and, and the steam, or you let it dry a little bit longer. It's... Um, it puts it on the lower range. Nicotine hit may be a little stronger than 1931. I'm not sure, but um, I could see it being an all-day smoke for this type of tobacco lover. Uh, for me, having smoked it, I would say it wouldn't be something. But again, you know, first impressions, it can take you like a while to get into tobaccos. I read that a lot, and I've experienced it too. It's a nice tobacco. It's not one that I would buy again. Um... You know, the, the difference is the 1931 is just richer, uh, burns cooler. It just seems like better quality tobacco. And um, if you like Navy Flake style tobaccos, that one you can't go wrong with. Um, I'd say, you know, like some of the Navy Flakes I seem to recall from the past, like Dunhill ones, would be uh, heavy on the nick hit. And, um, you know, which it can be a bit much, whereas the 4th Gen 1931 is... Uh, it's a little lower, it seems to me. Um, can't go wrong with that one, quite honestly. Um, it gets lower overall rating on tobacco reviews, but I think that's just because uh, this modern Virginia doesn't have enough reviews to, to balance out yet. And I'm limited. I'm limited with my tobacco tins in, the, in, the, in this area, so... Um, i got a decent amount of tobacco to smoke. You know, if you're not hunting for variety, I don't need to really buy anything else for a long time. But uh, um, when I do, it's going to be online, I guess. So uh, if you've got an online preference, I know there's Cup of Joe's, tobacco, Pipes and Tobacco, and some others. And I know there was some controversy about one of them came out, about some, uh, I think, political statements that the owner made. Pissed a lot of people off. Um, I don't have the time or inclination to go and look up that stuff. But if you've got a good recommendation for, um, you know, a good a good service in the online tobacco world and, uh, you know, with good ethics and, and whatnot for where you're going to part with your money, then uh, let me know in the comments. Thumb me up, please. Send my visit video to your relatives and friends. No, don't do that. Um, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. All right, I'm just going to give you a final update um, towards the end of the bowl here. Uh, aftertaste is okay. Uh, towards the bottom of the bowl, you're getting more of a nutty, burly flavor. I do get some sweetness. Um, that apricot stays with it. Um, not really my preference. Uh, you may, some people are gonna love the, love it. I think, but um, I mean, it's obviously a good smoke compared to say um, cheap uh, uh, bulk jar tobaccos and and stuff like that, but. Um, Again, for me, it goes back to there's, there's so many good tobaccos out there that I'm not fussed about this one. Um, so that's my uh, initial thoughts, you know. Obviously, um, you know, things uh, with tobacco, it, it, uh, pipe tobacco, it changes over time from our experience and de-aging and cellaring and different pipes and all of that. But, um, but you can get a good first, you know, a, a good sense of what it's about from a first uh, smoke also. Um, 
So there you have it. And somewhere I'll edit this in. Until next time again. Pied Piper. Are we done yet? <laughs>